Hey everyone, welcome one and all to another exciting SALT Project Community Open Hour. My name is Jimmy Chunga. I am your SALT Project Community Manager. Thank you so much for being here. Can we see my screen? No, it looks like we cannot see my screen. Just a black screen again. Yeah. Oh, you gotta love it. You gotta love it. Let me try it again. Let's see if we can make this work this time. All right, what about now? Can you see it now? Yes. Good now. All right, excellent. Please disregard the wrong date at the bottom of our title card there. Uh, Salt Project Community Open Hour. Thank you very, very much for all of you being here. Here's where you can find Salt Project. We are all over the place. Uh, YouTube, GitHub, Slack, Twitch, Reddit, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and of course, the Hacks Podcast. Uh, you can find us everywhere, and we appreciate you uh, getting involved and listening to the hacks and, um, and uh, engaging with us on Slack and helping us out. Speaking of which, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the things that you can do to further involve yourself with, uh, with Salt Project uh, here today. Um, you can see by the agenda slide here, we have a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff to talk about. Uh, I'm not even gonna go through all this, we're just gonna get going because I'm sure a lot of you have uh, questions and you're gonna have even more. Uh, once we get through the stuff today. Open hour happens every first and third Thursday, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Pacific time. Our next Salt Project Community Open Hour is going to be on Thursday, June 1st. So please make a note of it. Uh, also, we need you to find bugs, community. We need you to do your salty duty and find some bugs for us. We need testing. Uh, if, if, uh, if we have every single one of you testing 12 hours a day, it's still not going to be enough. So... Uh, we, we really need your help, and I'm going to give you free merch to do it. So if you find bugs, let us know. If you're wondering what the process is, hit me up on Slack, or you can email me at schunga at vmware.com. Uh, also, we'd like to invite you to join a Salt Project working group. Saltproject.io forward slash home forward slash working, or you can just go to saltproject.io and, uh, and get yourself started there. We've got drop-down menus on the, on the website, and it's, it's pretty easy for you to find a working group that suits your fancy. Um, and uh, speaking of groups, the Salt Project user group meetups are underway. We like to call them Spugum. It sounds gross, because it is. I'm only kidding. Uh, they're single day events, speakers, recorded sessions. We've got food and networking. Big shout out to Nick Hughes for putting this together. Very, very exciting stuff. And uh, also, I wanted to throw this out there. There's a lot of you that have been asking about Salt Comp. What happened to Salt Comp? Where is Salt Comp? Well, uh, salt comp, uh, we are not allowed to do anymore. It's a long story that I'm not going to bore you with. However, we do have something in the works that I think you're all going to be very, very excited about. So this is just a quick tease to say, hey, for those of you that are lamenting the loss of salt comp, hang in there. We've got something else happening and uh, it's going to be pretty cool. So we'll tell you about it very, very soon. Um, all right. Uh, our good friend, Barney Sowood. Barney on the boat, Barney Sowood, is changing the times of his, uh, his security working group uh, meetups. They're now going to be at 9 a.m. Mountain Time. That's 3 p.m. On, uh, the, on Zulu time, as I like to call it, on the Universal Time Clock. Uh, that happens the second Wednesday of every month. Again, Barney is your captain there. So if you would like to get signed up and, uh, and join up for Barney's security working group, I'm sure he'd love to have you. Uh, Please keep in mind, it's not here on the slide, but the times will change. They'll go an hour later in the winter time, and, and we'll remind you as we get closer to that uh, as we get into fall. Uh, I'm excited to announce that after being broken for several weeks, we have a new SALT Project community calendar. Uh, it's better. It's refreshed. It has a lot more functionality than the last one had, uh, but it's only been up for a day. So if you find any bugs or if you see anything that isn't working or dead links, uh, please report them to me because we're still working on this and getting everything flushed out. But I, I think this experience on saltproject.io uh, using the community calendar is going to be a much better experience for everybody. I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, it's more interactive. And again, you've got ICS downloads and Google downloads and Outlook downloads and all kinds of fun stuff there. For you. Fun stuff, as fun as a calendar can be. Uh, but yeah, go, go check that out at saltproject.io. And again, if you find anything similar to the testing thing, if you find a bug in there, let me know if you would. I'd, uh, I'd really appreciate it. Okay, so we've got a lot of stuff we're covering today. A lot of really, really exciting stuff. Uh, at the top of the list, our leadoff hitter, 
A uh, big shout out to Megan Wilhite. Uh, we've got stuff to talk about with Heist, the new release of Heist. So Megan, if you would, please take it away. If you need to share, just let me know. Um, yeah, I'll share here in a moment. I'm going to give a demo of the one of the new features. Uh, so we released Heist Salts to support 3006.1 and above. Going forward, we're going to only support 3006.1 and above. Um, there was some other big features that were added, such as the Saltmaster deployment. Um, so you can now deploy and manage a Saltmaster, and same with Salt Proxy. Um, there was a blog uh, that was written right there. That's the link. Um, it has more information about some of the smaller features added to the release. Um, and also, there was mention of the pseudo bug. There's a, a bug with passwordless with pseudo. I am actually like legit working on it right now, just writing tests for it. So I'm hoping to get that released Friday or early next week. So that should be resolved as well. Um, so if you can give me a hold of the screen, I can share my demo. Yeah, absolutely. Here you go. Trying to share a video. So this was pre recorded. All right. Does everybody see that? Yeah, we can see it. Looks good. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of talk over the video. So I have a roster here for the minion, and it's just your typical uh, roster file uh, that you used to use with the previous versions of Heist. You know, you define your SSH authentication information. Um, in this case, I'm showing off a bootstrap instance because we're going to deploy the master and we just want to bootstrap minions to it. And that's the IP address of the master. Um, and then I have a master uh, roster file as well. And that just defines, defines the SSH authentication information. So then we're going to go ahead and run our uh, master uh, heist salt dot master. So it's going to use that roster config and it's going to deploy it to that machine. So there it goes. It's doing a lot of stuff here, such as just copying the artifact over, um, so forth. There's the artifact being copied over. And here I'm showing you on the top there, on the top here is my salt master VM. Below is my minion. So I'm just showing you on the master that it's deploying the artifact correctly um, while we wait for it to be deployed. And as you can see here, the salt master service has started. So now we're going to deploy the minions to attach to this using the same command, but dot minion and pointing to that other roster config. So similar, it's deploying the minion you won't see the key here yet, uh, but once the minion's deployed and start the service is started, we should be able to see it. Um, so there's the minion. We can see the artifacts deployed and it looks like it was bootstrapped successfully. So we can see the minion running. We should see the key on the master. Let's go ahead and accept it. And we should be able to run commands now. I think, uh, yeah, I, the minion was still waiting for the, knowing that the master had accepted the key. That's why I had to run that command the sick time. And that is my demo. Oh, fantastic. Let's, uh, let's give Megan a round of applause, shall we? It's been a while since Megan's given us a demo. Well done, Megan. Thank you very, very much. I like, uh, I like Melissa's right. hands, Pedro. Thank you. Yes, yes, that's what I like to see. Well done, everybody, putting the hands up there. Now that's, I'm impressed. Thank you so much. Very, very good. Uh, all right, let's, uh, we'll, we'll head back to the slide deck here. Uh, well done, Megan, that was, that was great. Um, okay, and, and, uh, and not only that, I think, as soon as we move through this here, I may be relinquishing the screen very, very soon. We have also uh, Diwaz. Uh, is here with a uh, with uh, another demo. I love this so much. By the way, uh, a couple of things before we hand it off to uh, to Dwaz. Uh, 
I noticed that uh, in the chat, I believe it was Barney put in the chat that uh, the time zones are not reflected in the new community calendar. This is correct. Uh, with all of the functionality, with everything that we were trying to do, the one thing that we were not able to do for reasons that are unknown to me is we can't put a time zone in there. So all the times for everything that you see in the community calendar are going to be mountain time. Uh, that's where you know most of our core team is based. Not, not all of them, certainly, but a lot of them are. So, <clears throat> excuse me, all of the times that you see in the community calendar are mountain time. And... Uh, and, uh, and then if you have any questions beyond what you're seeing, you're more than welcome to hit me up so that, uh, so that you can have that clear. Put a, put a big label on it then. Thank you, Nick. Thank you for the pointer. It's been up for a day, man. Yeah, I'll, I'll, get, a, I'll get a label on there for sure. I appreciate you saying that. Uh, okay, DWAS, if you would, sir. Uh, scale a single job across multiple salt masters. It's a big title. Uh, let's do it, DWAS, if you're ready. Yeah, it is a big title. I probably need to work on work on that. That's uh, why I think it's my fault. <laughs> Thanks, man. Uh, all right. I, uh, can you relinquish the screen to me? Ab absolutely. There you go. All right. Okay. So hopefully you can see my presentation here. Can everybody? Yeah, we got you. We can see. see. All right. <laughs> So here's an alternate title, Horizontal Scaling of the Salt Master. Much better. I like yours better. <laughs> All right. So um, the idea here is to uh, have a job run. Um, if there's multiple minions in the job, they can be connected to multiple, multiple masters. Um, so Salt uh, today does have some high, available, high availability features. Uh, we have the multi-master feature. And what this does is it essentially creates two minions uh, running on the minion, um, like two minion threads, basically, one connected to each master. And each of these masters can send jobs out to the, to the minion. Um, we also have multi-master failover. Um, and in this case, you have the two threads, but one of them is inactive until the other one uh, that if the minion notices one master goes offline, it'll start connecting to the other. Um, so this is great for minions to be able to stay connected with masters. Um, but there are some drawbacks. One of one of the drawbacks is that these minions, uh, they need to be reconfigured if you want to add more masters. So they they need to know the IP address of all the different masters. So it's not that you can just add masters into this uh, the other problem is when you run jobs, all the jobs are still pinned into one master. So if you run a large job, um, we're not actually util utilizing both masters. All of the commands, all of the minions are connected up to the one master for this large job. And that can uh, cause masters to have to scale currently vertically. So you have to have some pretty big masters if you want to handle lots of minions. So this is the way it looks today. Uh, and I think in an ideal world, we would have it look like this to where we could share the load of this, of these minions, uh, th this job across all, all of the masters um, that we have. So in order to do that, uh, we need to understand a little bit about how jobs are, how jobs are executed. And basically here, this shows that the CLI, and this, this could also be the master plugin, but uh, the CLI uh, sends a request to the request server. The request server sends a job to the publisher. Job goes out to the minion. The minion does its, uh, does its work, which could include some round trips uh, back to this master, um, hence the load on the master. When the minion's done, it sends its uh, sends its job back to the request server, which goes into the IPC event bus and back to the client, the CLI client. Um, so in order to get this job to run on multiple masters, I first started uh, looking at the job return path here. Uh, and what I have is I have the masters uh, all, if they all... Um, forward their IPC event buses to each other. 
and then you can you can see we can get uh, job returns from multiple minions connected to multiple different masters. Uh, and then for job execution, we had had to make one slight change to where when we publish, uh, the publish goes from the CLI to the request server. And instead of the request server directly to the publisher, we're going through the event bus. So that event can now get forwarded out to different masters as well. So this is the architecture that I came up with for running uh, this kind of uh, what I'm calling a master pool, um, where we have HA proxy. Uh, we have multiple masters behind the HA proxy. The, the master pool here is the fact that these masters are forwarding their event buses, their IPC event buses to each other. And then we have the shared state, uh, which is like the master keys, the minion keys, the uh, file routes, pillar routes, everything that needs to be shared for this to happen is being shared via cluster in this example. And now I'm going to do a demo. So let's see. All right. Now, does everybody see my terminal? Yes. Yeah, right. we got you. So here we have uh, HA proxy running. We have three backends. Uh, here's our HA proxy config where we have um, the pub, uh, one, one HA proxy for the, the publisher, job publisher, and the, another for the request server. And those each have three backends. Uh, and then we can see here that we don't have actually any masters started up right now. So I'm going to change that. Um, here is our one of our masters. And uh, in the master config, we have, um, should be up at the top here. Uh, so we have a, a master pool. Um, and that is how we're defining all, all of the other masters that this master is going to forward its event bus to. And then um, we can see the like the PKI dir is shared on this cluster mount and the cache dir, et cetera. So let's start this uh, master. We have three of these that we're going to start. Okay, so now over here on HA Proxy, we could see that we're at, we're, our backends are coming online. And then I am going to start these minions here. So I've got also got three minions that I'm going to have running. And then this one, I'll show you. Oops. So in this minion, um, the master IP address here is to HA proxy. So um, this minion doesn't know anything about the three masters that we have. As far as it, it's concerned, it's only just talking to the one master. So we'll start that guy. So now um, when this comes up, we will have three minions connected. And you, uh, we can see here, it's a little bit hard to see, but they are actually connecting to all the various different backends. So they're getting shared between all three of the different masters. And we can see here on one of the masters that we're getting events forwarded from the other, the other masters. Um, so I am going to now just run a test.ping. And we got a ping return from all three of the minions that were connected to these three masters. And the job ran and executed uh, and all the returns came back through all three of the masters. 
So this job was scaled out to all three of the masters. And that's it for my demo. Outstanding. Fantastic. Thank you, DWAS. Uh, anytime we get a DWAS demo, it's a good day here at Open Hour. So thank you very, very much, sir. Um, you know, we, I'm sure we have questions um, and we've moved past Megan's demo very, very quickly. Uh, yeah, well done, applause. Very good. I love to see the hands again. Well done. Thank you. Um, how do we want to do this? Uh, I, I'm inclined to say, does anybody have any questions now about, about this demo so that we can address this very, very quickly? Um, oh, actually, there's a, there's a Melissa's asking, this is really cool. Will this be published somewhere? This open hour is going to be published, as is every open hour, on YouTube. So you can watch this again if you need to go back and check it out. Uh, we post it as soon as Zoom makes it available to me. So keep checking back to the SALT Project, uh, the SALT Project YouTube page, and it'll be there. Um, does yeah, anybody have any questions? I, I think we're more interested in like the configurations and such, right? Like, is, is this going to be written up as a blog that's consumable in written form so that we could like see it? Or is it going to be thrown up in like a GitHub repository or something like that? Yeah, I, uh, I believe I'll be able to make a blog on this um, and post it on the SALT, uh, you know, SALT Project IO website, as well as I, I hope to actually have this work um, go into a an upcoming release uh, like three thousand seven. Awesome. Okay, Vic also says, wasn't the support for RabbitMQ as the messaging bus done with something similar in mind? How so does this relate compare? That I'm glad that you pointed that out. So this wasn't actually the RabbitMQ stuff wasn't actually done with this in mind. It was it was more about just introducing a broker into the um into the event bus but uh this work would also benefit from having a broker so right now the three masters they are all three sending events to each other versus so like that'll scale well but it'll scale out to i would say about maybe 30 masters or so and then it's going to start you're going to start getting a lot of that traffic uh, going between the masters, but if if we have the broker, uh, the ability to to add a broker into the mix, then that'll allow us to scale this out uh, much further. Which uh, we still are planning on getting that RabbitMQ PR merged. Very good. Um, how does it differ from Syndic? It's another question in the chat. Um, so Syndix, uh, so this is basically, uh, it's creating a pool of masters in one location. Syndix are, you're, you're able to divide up the minions, uh, but they're pinned into this Syndic. So in all of our master, multi you know, master and scaling solutions that we have today, uh, when, when the minion is connected to a Syndic, it's it's only connected to that one syndic. There's no way to easily add resources to that syndic other than increasing the size of the instance or you know, adding uh, physical resources to the server that the syndic's running on. Whereas with this, we're able to uh, go into the realm of like auto scaling groups and things like that to where the minion doesn't need to know about more than one master and the one master that it does know about can be more easily scaled to accommodate more minions. Very good. Okay. Um, Barney also asks, uh, you seem to be sharing a master cache between multiple masters. Did you have to make any changes uh, to make that work safely? Uh, not, I didn't make any changes for this demo, but they're, potentially would need to be some changes made as far as locking of job files go. All right, great stuff. Anybody else? No, we'll move on. We've got another demo. We're stacking and packing them today here at Open Hour. We good to move on? Yeah? Okay. Yep. All right, thank you again, Diwaz, uh, fantastic. Next up, we've got Pedro. Is, is, is it Pedro and Caleb or we, uh, is, is Pedro flying solo today? For this oh, no it's caleb pilot uh, flying solo Pedro is oh it's caleb back flying back solo year. yeah all right fantastic uh running ml models at jupyter notebook with salt analytics salt analytics is something that a lot of people are really excited about um caleb it's all yours man 
Sweet. Can I share your or can I steal the screen? Absolutely. There you go. Thank you. All right. So if things are going well, you should be able to see my editor right about now with the Yeah, we got you. It looks great. Sweet. So I'm going to be talking a little bit about how we can use saw analytics to run uh, machine learning models uh, on whatever place you have salt, uh, either a minion or a master deployed. So I'm going to come from the perspective of a data scientist and say, okay, I have this uh, Jupyter notebook, which does some machine learning. If you're familiar with the MNIST handwritten digits data set, that's just all this is doing. It's it's taking in a 28 by 28 black and white pixel image uh, as a 784 dimension vector, and it's uh, doing some training. And then uh, we're saving the model here. And then obviously you need to make sure it's evaluating. And for our use case, this one evaluates at about 97% accuracy. So this is what you'd have if you were a data scientist or something similar, whatever your context is. Um, and we want to figure out how to deploy it uh, and manage it using salt. So from the perspective of SAW analytics, we have a couple of steps in our pipelines. We have collectors, processors, and forwarders. Um, and we see a lot of the stuff in here doesn't need to be used. Um, so we have to actually trim down the notebook to look like something like this. Um, we are using, within SAW analytics, a custom processor that runs a Jupyter notebook that will likely be released in the future. It's not yet released. Um, but that processor uses a tool called Paper Mill, which is basically a Python wrapper around the Jupyter Notebook CLI. Um, and we're using that to call in and run the Jupyter Notebook. So Paper Mill allows some cool things like uh, inspecting tags on cells and uh, parameterizing your Jupyter Notebooks. So you can see I have a couple of parameters just kind of defaulted to none up here. These are your inputs to the model since we're going to be evaluating one by one. Um, and it's going to pass, the framework is going to pass uh, paths to NumPy arrays that have been saved to files, and then we're going to load them, uh, do some transformation, and then load the model, which I saved in this notebook down here. And then we're going to evaluate the input we gave it that it read out. So we have a configuration here that is, looks complicated, but it's not terribly complicated. So we have a little collector, which I have, which uh, the MNIST digits that I'm talking about is a standard data set. So there's some utilities in TensorFlow and more specifically Keras that allows you to download the MNIST digits. And all this, this collector is doing is selecting a random one and passing it down the pipeline um, out of the test data that it provides. And then we have a little processor, like I said, to serialize the uh, NumPy ND arrays to files, and then this is where we're saving them. And then we have the core of the ML, which is the Jupyter Notebook processor. It runs the Jupyter Notebook using parameters XPath and YPath, which are paths to the serialized inputs. And we give it the paths to the notebook, and we give it a path to an output notebook. Paper Mill does parameterization, so it needs an output notebook um, because you don't want to overwrite your existing notebook with a new notebook that has some cells injected with parameters, something that might look a little bit like this where it injects the parameters. Um, and then we have a little processor because you actually get the output of the notebook as a string and you want to transform it into, in this case, a list. And it's gonna do some simple averaging of accuracy and lost. And we're just dumping all of that to disk. Um, this is what the pipeline configuration as a whole might look like. So now if everything is going right, you should be able to see my terminal here. Um, I'm going to copy over the file for the notebook comp onto the minion include directory. And then I'm going to start a salt master. I have the engine running on a minion. You can run salt analytics on a master. It does the same thing. Now, if we start the minion, We should see some debug logging here that shows us uh, what is going on within the pipeline. So it's loading up TensorFlow here, which is part of the notebook, um, loading all the plugins. And then you can see some funny looking progress bars because it's debug logging and uh, you can see it executing the notebook. And if we go to the output, 
you can see it dumping um, the evaluation results that it's getting. Uh, like I said, this is 97% accurate. So over time, your uh, accuracy should converge to 97%, um, and your loss will converge to whatever it converges to. But it takes a while, you can see, because these Jupyter notebooks have a lot of overhead, um, and they have to load the model every time. And so another solution to this, if we stop the minion, is to take your important code from the stripped down notebook and then transform it into its own custom processor right inside of Salt Analytics. And so I've done that and I have that version of Salt Analytics installed. And this is what your config might look like. It's a lot similar or it's a lot simpler because you don't have to do a lot of the pre-processing and post-processing after you run the network because you're able to pass the inputs as pure Python data structures and get the outputs as pure Python data structures. So instead of having those pre-steps and post-steps, I now just have a processor that runs the network and the important code in that network. Um, and we're dumping to a different file on the disk and same collector. So this is what your pipeline configuration might look like. Now we go here. I'm going to remove that configuration and I'm going to copy over the analytics port of the notebook and then I'm going to start the salt master and start it start the salt minion Now you can see it's going to go a lot faster. We're still going to have to load TensorFlow because that's part of the model, but uh, you'll see it spitting out results really quickly here after it loads up TensorFlow. So it's spitting out a lot of them. And we can do the same thing, just tail the other output file, and you can see it dumping everything we need to do. Um, so that's one way you can make this a lot quicker. And this... Uh, this version of the pipeline actually has a couple of advantages where if you're porting it to Salt Analytics and not running the Jupyter Notebook explicitly, you're able to do some caching. Um, so instead of, for instance, running, uh, loading the model every time where the Jupyter Notebook will do that, you have to, uh, or you're able to cache the model. So it's only loaded the first time. And then afterwards, it's going to grab the model from cache if it's in the cache. Uh, and yeah, that is the demo. You have so the, I, I, the port yeah, I could be wrong, hand. but it's um, go for it. What was that? If you if you have the port code at hand for the salt analytics, yeah, I can Sorry, pull it I'm up. Throwing you, I'm throwing you under the bus, <laughs> <laughs> just so that people can have a, a see of what it looks like in the notebook and how we can port it. Yep. So this is your potential. this is your Especially network processor. Um, I am not sure how this is going to be released uh, when it is released. Wait, wait. I... You're not sharing. Oh, okay. Hold on. Now you can see it. There we go. Sweet. Um, so this is the custom port of the Jupyter Notebook. You can see the important code is actually kind of reduced into one line. Um, and this is where your speed improvements will come. So this is the the caching of the model, it's going to put it in cache if it isn't loaded. Otherwise, it's going to pull it from cache here. Um, and then your actual machine learning code is, is reduced to, I guess, three lines if you want to cut the input assignments. So, um, and then afterwards, you're doing the accuracy and, and loss averaging. So that's what it would look like. This is a simple model. This is sort of your hello world of machine learning. Um, but this is what it would look like to port the notebook, the stripped down notebook into a a custom processor. Well, we should release this as an example uh, in the Salt Analytics repo so that anybody can try it out pipeline and run a very basic model. Yep, I was planning on doing that. Oh, this is great stuff. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Caleb, is that your first demo that you've done at Open Hour? Is that your first one? That is my first one, yes. Oh, congratulations, man. It was a fantastic job. Let's hear it for Caleb. Thank Stuff you. isn't easy. You all know that. And uh, and shout out to Caleb. Shout out to Pedro for uh, for the assist there. Uh, also very grateful of, again to Megan and to Diwaz for making uh, this open hour so fantastic. Um, moving right along here.
We've got, again, so much to cover. Uh, well, quickly, before we move on, does anybody have any questions about Caleb's demo? Salt Analytics is very cool, and uh, and it's getting a ton of buzz. Um, no, okay, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and move on then. Um, next up, we're going to send it over to uh, to Thomas Phipps. He's uh, he this guy man, old reliable is what I like to call Thomas. He's here every single open hour to check in with the community forums. Thank you very much, Thomas, for doing that. What's going on? Oh, uh, every single one where I'm not sick. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. We've had a good run, though. We're doing good. Yes. Uh, anyway, um, because we had so many demos today, I wanted to go with a shorter one. But a couple of weeks ago, somebody was asking in a ticket about the Python render and being able to do all these nifty things that it just does not do. With It is just a render engine. It does exactly the same thing the YAML render engine does, and that is output a dictionary into the state, state system that gets read. It has no calls into the state system. It You can't do any magic while the state system is running things. All it does is output a dictionary to the state system. But when people see that it's Python, for some reason, it clicks in their brain that it is a full DSL, it, which it is not. Very good. Is there anything else there, Thomas? Uh, hey, Tom. Yes. Um, could, you, could you say like something brief about the difference between the Python render and the Py objects render, because I get a lot of questions on that as well. Uh, it's been a while since I've even looked at the Py objects render. Um, Py objects is kind of a different take on it. Um, it does the same thing. It is just a render engine, um, but it's based on Oh, what is it? Uh, yeah, it's been years since I've even looked at the Pi Objects renter. That may be um, something we could even look at in the future, right? We could maybe talk about that in the next open hour, possibly. Uh, maybe, yeah. Okay. Um, well, while he's looking at that, maybe Tom, Thomas, if you find something out as we're uh, moving through here, we can just have you jump in, in the Q and A. Um, yeah, uh, I will say the what I do know is the Python render is literally Python being run. It's included and it just runs. And then, I, if I remember right, Py objects you create these object like Python tools that look more like states than actual Python. OK. All right, very good. Thank you, Thomas Phipps. Uh, and then moving straight straight into our Q&A, or as I like to call it, Nick time. Uh, Nick, glad to have you here, man, as always. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to yield. I'm just going to give you a chance to do this first. I don't know if I have any questions today. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've, I've been sort of out uh, for the past couple of open hours. Happy to be here today. Um, Great. Uh, I don't really have any uh, PRs to talk about. I know uh, Megan was taking a look at some of them, and I think I got one merged in. Okay, um, fantastic. Oh, well, good uh, deal. I, I have a, a, an announcement, I guess. Um, okay. So recently we had uh, somebody in the community that wanted to step forward and uh, break Croxmox out into a salt extension. So that work is currently being done right now. So that's exciting stuff. Indeed it is. Yeah, it's great stuff. That's very exciting. Yeah, so if, yeah. if anybody wants to get involved, uh, you know, breaking out uh, anything into more salt extensions, like definitely all of the cloud stuff is a great candidate. Um, but if you have any other ideas about stuff that's sitting in core right now that you'd like for it to move faster, um, 
definitely reach out on Slack or, or whatever. And, uh, you know, I'm sure there's some folks that, that can help guide you through that. Very cool. Um, also, uh, before we get into questions, I, I forgot to put this out. Uh, Hunter is actually going to be doing a demo for us in the next open hour on June 1st, as is Shane. Um, if you are a member of the community rather than a member of the core team and you would like to have some time to do a demo, we would love that. Uh, we would love to have demos from community members. So uh, Hunter, I want to give you a shout out. Thank you for reaching out and saying, hey, I would like to do something on this. If, if any of you would like to do anything like that, please let me know. Just hit me on Slack, super easy, or schunga at vmware.com. And, uh, and we'll, get you, uh, we'll get you on the schedule and get you hooked up. Uh, Barney is asking in the chat, what is happening with the uh, extensions.solveproject.io site? Uh, does anybody, I don't know what that is. Um, does anybody have an answer to that? Uh, I believe that is a kind of a proof of concept that we put together for being able to find salt extensions. Um, there's nothing slated for that right this second, but as we start to break out more things in extensions, we plan to overhaul that and uh, have it be the place where you can find extensions and find the versions of like which which extensions work with which salt versions and things like that. And uh, Nick has put uh, has put a GitHub link in the chat there as well. If you're not following what's going on in the chat, that, that may help. Okay, thanks, Dwaz. Anybody else have any other questions? Where is the calendar, please? <laughs> Go to saltproject.io, and there's a calendar drop down. In fact, I could I could probably even share my screen here really quick. Thanks for asking, Hunter. That's <laughs> Sure. Let's. Oh uh, crap! It's at the top. Never mind. Damn it. Hey, look. I'm. I wasn't going to say anything. I was just going to show you. That's. That's. I. Totally cool. I googled that, and there are so many things named Salt, Salt Project, and Salt Thingamabob, and Calendar yeah. that it. Uh, I missed that one. Sorry. Yeah. It, no. It, don't be sorry at all. Uh, also, previously we had a calendar uh, ICS underneath the calendar. That drop down has been removed for those of you that like to import all of your stuff. Um, that is within the calendar itself in the, uh, interactivity of the calendar. Just, just click on the buttons or click on the dates and, and you can go ahead and do that. Um, okay. Garrett, not found. Uh, it's, it's not yeah, found. The Google and Outlook download links for the ICS. The second, the, at the bottom of the calendar, the rightmost two links are both broken. They're both yeah. broken. Okay, good. Thanks for letting me know. Um, we've, uh, it's, it's been, again, this, it's actually been up for less than a day and we have noticed that links and tabs just kind of turn themselves off at random. So, uh, I'll make notes here and we'll get that fixed for you. Thanks, Gary. Um, okay. Any the other, other questions? The other outlook one is also broken because when you import it, it goes to a host that doesn't exist. Oh, good. That's good to know. All right. Thanks. <laughs> thanks for letting me know. We'll get Sorry about there. that. No, 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 no. Hey, I'm sorry about that. So uh, thanks for letting me know. Again, you know, we just, it just barely came online last night. And so uh, there's going to be some bugs, but we'll get it, we'll get it all fixed. I'm just glad we have something that, that kind of works at this point because the thing's been so broken. So, um, all right, anybody else? No, is that it? Wow, that was easy today. All right, I'll bite. There we go. <laughs> um, I know there was talk, uh, I think we talked last year um, about integrating some of the Pepper functionality into this native salt client. I assume nothing's done, uh, been done with that, but since we're looking for Fillinger for Q&A, what's the update on that, if any? I can give an update on that. Uh, we actually plan to start at least start on that uh in 3007 time frame and uh i've been talking to barney uh we've had a few chats on the slack about uh him potentially helping with that work um but it is definitely in process or in the process of getting uh started awesome very good anything else uh, I had a query from a coworker, and that is in a couple of places, uh, you're discouraged, at least in this open source version, or maybe it was the commercial version, from using Syndix and instead going to some other architecture. Is that still the best 
recommendation. Um, our use case for a syndic is we have a traditional high performance cluster where the compute nodes and the storage nodes cannot see the regular network. That would be enterprise. Enterprise is not compatible with Syndic at all. Okay. But for now, Syndic's still for open, perfectly fine. Well, okay. It, it's a hack, but it's fine. Okay. Uh, it 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 works for us. We're running mm -hmm. uh, multiple Syndics for uh, redundancy, but it has its quirks. Let's put it that way. Yes, but thank it you. Yes, it, it does have its quirks. <laughs> and that is another thing we're starting to look at um, in the 3007 timeframe is improving yeah. uh, the ability to basically provide the, the, the functionality that Syndex provide, but provide it in a better way and more natively in the master. The, the two big things that confuse us well, there's only one big thing that confuses us, and that is when you have multiple syndics for redundancy, you get usually you get multiple returns of the data, and that confuses mm -hmm. uh, some of our monitoring scripts. Mm -hmm. um, I wish there was a way to turn that off or limit that or something. That's part of the multi-master stuff. If I remember yeah, right. I would think it's... you would want to do the failover multi-master in that case. Okay. I will I will make a note to investigate that. Thank you. Thank you both for your info. And once again, a reminder, Hunter is going to be in the hot seat on June 1st in the next open hour doing a demo for us. So thanks again, man. It's going um, to be a quickie. Is that right? Well, that's all right. Hey, that's, uh, you know, so many jokes I'm passing on. All right. So uh, any other I questions? Deserve that. I deserve that. <laughs> I mean, it's like, you know. It's for me, it's like, I can't resist. Um, okay, anybody else have any more questions? No? All right, if there's no other questions, Shane, sir, if you would play us out. Yeah, well, my my dad works for a, a road company, road crew, and I, for the longest time, I never wanted to believe that he was stealing. But when I got home, all the signs were there. Oh, <laughs> yes. Let me see the hands. Let me see the hands and the emojis. Yes. There it is. Well done. Well done, Shaley. <laughs> Barney is shocked. Mm -hmm. He's shocked at how bad it is. Uh, good stuff. All right. Hey, thank you, everybody. Thank you to Thomas Phipps, Megan Wilhite. Thank you to Caleb Beard. Thank you to D Waz. And, uh, and for all the great questions as well. Uh, good stuff, exciting stuff happening with SALT. Uh, I think it's an amazing time to be a member of the SALT community. Uh, Melissa, I agree. Awesome demos today. Yeah, absolutely. So thanks again. Next open hour is happening again, June 1st. Uh, and uh, thanks for the help with the uh, community calendar. We'll work to get those things fixed. Um, I hope everybody has a great day, has a great weekend. We'll see you next time. Bye.